Well, hey guys, welcome back to the vlog. I am planning to do a video for you guys on what happens when you stop washing your face because, uh, you know, you'll see posts here and there like, I quit washing my face for 30 days and my skin has never looked better. So it should be up at this point, definitely check it out, but <laughs> I'm gonna come in and wash my face this morning with the CeraVe Hydrating Foaming Oil Cleanser. Let me know in the comments if you have tried this, what you think about it, because over the years I've gotten a lot of feedback from you all about CeraVe cleansers, like some of you like them, but I've gotten feedback that they burn and sting. So I'm curious if people are experiencing like burning, stinging, redness with this. I certainly don't. I think it's a really nice formula. I've also been using it as a hand wash. I'm down to mid E. Um, that's how far I've, I've come on the, on the value size. I got this on the Amazonian. So <clears throat> I woke up this morning. I went for a little walk. I think it's unfortunately going to be really hot today, but then later on the week it's supposed to get kind of cold-ish, so always guessing <laughs> with the weather here. You never know what you're going to get, but that's okay. I saw the ragweed count as high today, which is not my friend. Speaking of ragweed, you know, one of the benefits of cleansing uh, at the end of the day is that you know, it kind of helps remove arrow allergens from the skin surface, which really can set off your immune system. This morning I'm coming in with the Healthy Renew Face Serum from Cetaphil. Um, and, you know, for people who have eczema, that can really be a source of a flare. But then again, with eczema, it's a delicate balance. You know, you don't want to over cleanse because that inevitably compromises the integrity of your skin barrier, which is already, you know, a baseline and issue. So it's like... So for my sunscreen, I'm doing the Super Goop Unseen. Now, the Trader Joe's dupe of this, to me, I can't really tell the difference other than the price I pay, but you, this formula is really nice. It reminds me, those of you in Greece, you have Frezzy Derm, very similar. That clear, colorless, cushiony consistency. I mean, there's, there's, there's no cast here. I mean, you don't even have to think about a white cast. There, there, there's, no, there's no chalkiness whatsoever. I mean, it's completely clear, colorless. No fragrance, and this one, uh, along with the you know Trader Joe's ones, are these type of formulas in general. They um, have like a pore blurring effect. They soften and smooth the skin. A mineral version of this, in my experience, that's really silicon rich like this, but it's mineral and tinted. This is the MD Solar Science. Um, tinted mineral cream. So right here, as I'm sitting in the car, there are a few things going on that can aggravate melasma. First of all, the UV. You, of course, you can get you can get UV tinted films for your car that cut down on that. But the UVA rays come through, and that can aggravate melasma. Uh, the visible light namely the blue light from the sun comes through, that can aggravate melasma. Plus, the heat. You know, if your face is getting warm, you have to be careful. That can actually worsen melasma. Any type of skincare product that you put on that's irritating, likewise, can aggravate it. I mean, it's such a fickle disease. It's really challenging um, to cope with for people to manage, you know, avoiding triggers. Like, you know, one thing that can aggravate it is... Uh, you know, I mentioned heat, but like uh, a lot of people find that their melasma gets worse if they do like hot yoga um, or go in like a sauna for sure. Uh, it definitely can, can aggravate that. So I went over to Craft Ducks because I wanted some Christmas decorating inspiration. This place is a must see if you uh, are ever bored and you're in the area. It's, it's quite entertaining to say the least. And they have a lot of really unique finds. It's basically like two warehouses. On one side, it's all Christmas decorations. And on the other side, it's like 
a lot of other craft supplies, plus um, a, a large selection actually of tabletop books, like those books that a lot of people use on their coffee table or for decorating that are really fun to look at. Anyway, uh, this place has like a ton of cool holiday yard art as well. Uh, so if you're somebody who like loves going over the top and you know who you are, I'm sure, I'm sure you exist out there because you are the type of people who have entertained me throughout my childhood. And I'm specifically talking about those people who go so overboard with their outdoor Christmas decorating that they have lights synced to music through the radio. Comment below on if you guys ever did that as a child, you, you went to that house. Um, I, I swear like every town must have a house that does that. And so they, th this must be the kind of place where they get the stuff to do what they do. Um, but I always have fond memories of going to those types of houses. I, I but I think craft acts is for people who are in like the interior decorating wedding planning industry. And I, I want to say originally it was only open to them and they can shop here wholesale and get discounts. But if you're just, you know, a lay person like myself, uh, you can shop in here now. They have a lot of unique finds and they also do these over the top like garlands and wreaths that they will do for you and then sell. They're really, you know, they're really nice. I'll show you some as we go through the store. Let me know in the comments, do you do a real tree or do you stick with an artificial tree? I, um, throughout my life, I, I can count on one hand the number of times that I have had a real tree. And I think depending on where you live, they can be great, but you know, in other areas, they are more difficult to source. Like, I don't know, do Christmas trees really grow here in Texas? Comment below. I mean, I know they have tree farms. Um, see, here's an example of one of those uh, wreaths that they've made for you, or like one of the garlands. They really do a good job. And I love coming here because my, um, they have a lot of the peppermint theme, the candy cane, red and white. And a lot of my main tree in the living room, I kind of do sort of red and white. Although I don't know I'm gonna, if I'm gonna do the red honestly this year, I think I'm gonna stick more to like woodsy whites. I haven't decided fully yet. Um, I'm, I'm later in this vlog, you'll see I've already put my tree up and I'm in the process of fluffing it. So it's gonna be an itchy couple of days for me. Um, and I know better, like I know I need to wear those fluffing gloves, but you know, once I, I, I'm kind of like a little busybody. once I put the tree up, I can't stop like fluffing it. And I'm like, you need to put the gloves on. And 20 minutes later, I'm covered in hives. Uh, anyway, here's some of the wreaths that they have. Aren't they nice? Like they really go like all out on, on pumping them full, full of faux flowers and ribbons. I love the ones with like the little soldiers or nutcracker. I, Anything Nutcracker, I am automatically drawn to. Like, I love the little Mouse King there. I'm filming on my phone and I, I don't know, I'm watching this footage back and <laughs> this is kind of like hypnotic, watching all of these glittery balls. I feel like I get um, slightly better uh, width, I guess you might say, on my phone than in comparison to my vlogging camera. This seems like something you could easily make. Um, I don't know. Uh, let me know in the comments if you can DIY a lollipop. <laughs> but uh, I, I wonder if this is where people come who do set design for like the ballet. Um, if this is kind of where they come. Like, does anybody in my in the audience does anybody do set design for a living for theater? Let let us know. Like, tell us all of your secrets. You would think I would know because, you know, throughout my adolescence and college years, I was very active in ballet and in everything. But the scene, the scenery just kind of popped up. The set design always just appeared, you know, during during rehearsal, uh, you know, in the theater and then for the show. And I never really knew where it came from. Now, this is the place to get ribbon. Uh, don't go to, well, I shouldn't say don't go to, Michael's or Hobby Lobby, go there for like basic ribbon, but they have such unique ribbon here. I didn't really spend a lot of time going through the ribbon section because there were a lot of people in here, but they have some of the most beautiful ribbon with all of these cool designs, patterns, every single type of color, shade, combination, 
this is the place to look for ribbon. Um, like look at all of these lilac and purple shades here. So pretty. If you are into making wreaths and you use ribbon, this is where you need to come. Love these little Santa sitting up there. Last time I came here, they had a lot of pre-decorated, like over the top trees, but I didn't really see those this time. I don't know if they have sold a lot of them. Yeah, like this is what makes me think do, that people who do set design might come here because, you know, like the Nutcracker scenery is kind of stuff like this, candy land type theme. And I guess this is the kind of place maybe they source that, but I thought these were so adorable, these little circus monkeys. <laughs> I go back and forth on my feelings about um, like a candy land themed Christmas decorating because I do like the way they look, the pastels, but I always default to more traditional Christmas colors like red and white and green. I don't know what it is. I have really just gotten into like Christmas tchotchkes with all these like in-depth scenes. Um, I, I'm currently like fixated on snow globes. I don't know where this has come from. I, I blame that Christmas rock store that I went to with you guys last weekend it, it, because I just feel like so calm, surrounded by over-the-top Christmas decorations that it's like I need to reproduce that now because it's like it's like such a mood boost. I love these too. Um, I don't know what they're called. These windmill things, you know, you put the candles in and this one is huge. Um, and it's got like quite a bit going on here. Like you have a little um, manger scene here and like inside there are some angels. It's really involved, but I don't think this one actually takes candles. So I don't know how it spins. Maybe it's battery operated. So fun fact, um, there used to be this stop and I haven't seen it in years. Um, it's called Angel Dust. <laughs> And that sounds like a drug, a street drug. I think it is. Um, but it, it's also a Christmas decoration. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That stuff is like, um, like basically itching powder. It's like fiberglass. One year we got it. And no sooner did we start trying to decorate with it, I, my eczema just revved up because fiberglass, those little fibers, they can get embedded in your stratum corneum and just really aggravate your skin. Oh my gosh, I don't know. They can't, they can't possibly still make this. See, I'm over on the other side now with all the decorating books. This Lottery book really caught my eye. Let me know if you've ever been there. Uh, when I lived in New York, I went a couple of times but um, they had a, a little recipe book if you want to learn their, their secrets. I didn't spend much time over here because I was kind of running out of time. But as you can see, they have a lot of books. They have children's books, all, any kind of you know, large pictured book, decorating book you could possibly imagine they have here. And since a lot of bookstores have closed and you know we're kind of stuck with Barnes and Noble, which I told you guys last weekend is not really coming through with the books anymore. Like Barnes and Noble is kind of just turned into a gift shop. Yes, they have books, but it's not quite the same. Um, but this place is a hidden gem for, for books. Not like, you know, a book that you're gonna sit down and read, but a book that you're gonna sit down and look through or have a conversation over. Definitely come here and check them out. All right, guys, I started at the beginnings of pulling out my Christmas decorations out here. And once I start, I can't stop. So I put the tree out, but I need to fluff it. And I put the lights on it. Uh, I've had this tree for, gosh, uh, probably six, uh, five, five years. It's lit, pre, it's a pre-lit tree, but none of the lights work anymore. So I have, a mix of two different types of lights on there. So I kind of like the way it looks like white and sort of soft yellow. I like the mix of the two, but ignore the tree. It needs to be seriously fluffed, but I like to put the lights on and then kind of fluff around. I have filler that I'm going to put in there and then trust me, just trust the process. Once I get it all together, it just looks amazing. But right now it is, it is 
stretching its legs because it's been in storage for a while. And I just pulled out some of my Christmas decorations and set them here. I have this sweet little nativity and then my joy sign I've had for years. This I got a couple of years ago. It was uh, a gift someone gave me and it had like coffee mix and stuff in there and the jar is so pretty. You can put a candle in and it lights up. It looks really nice. I put like a battery operated, you know, little faux candle in there. My little countdown to Christmas. I'm definitely way too early for that to even be functional because it only counts down, I think, 25 days and me putting my stuff out two months in advance, but it takes me some time. Anyway, I've got my Christmas tree skirt here and these placemats. I don't think I'll put them out just yet, maybe in a couple of days once I get everything. And I still have my fall placemats, so. Then I have my little red truck with the Christmas trees in the back uh, that I need to stick out. Oh, and my gym short Santa. I love this guy. I put him actually over here in the little display. <laughs> Um, I kind of have random stuff stuck there, but it sort of all comes together. Well, hey guys, I am out of the shower. I'm all moisturized. I wanted to update you guys on my current nightly foot care routine. I have been using the Pyong Kang Yule Softening Foot Cream. I got this from Stylevana several months ago, and I've really been enjoying it. It's not as intense as Carousel, which I use about once a week. I This is really great. As a side note, if you're new here, Carousel, Perfect if you have dry, cracked heels, crumbly toenails. I mean, it really helps. Speaking of toenails, man, I'm going on a tangent. This is a great version of that for the nails specifically. It's a lacquer that you paint on. It's got urea and lactic acid. It can really help improve the appearance and the health of the nails. But likewise, you can, you can get improvement using foot ointment like this too, because it has those same ingredients. Anyways. Um, I only use this once a week because it is so robust that if you use it on a daily basis, at least for me, I end up getting blisters because I work out, you know, walk and or run a lot. And plus, there's something about my gait, like, I have this habit on the treadmill when I'm walking. I think I twist my heel into the ground and that friction, you know, favors blisters. So if I'm a little overzealous on this, I will get a blister, but blah, 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 all that to say, like all that long-winded back-end explanation, I have been doing this nightly, except the nights I use the carousel, to my feet after I get out of the shower, put this on to the feet while they're still a bit damp. I mean, they're not like soaking wet, but they're damp. It's a perfect time because the stratum corneum on the bottoms of your feet is super, super thick. So after you get out of the shower, it's like nice and hydrated, and it's a lot more amenable to the keratolytic ingredients penetrating, softening, and exfoliating. So these kind of foot ointments, creams, lotions, what have you, work better when they are applied to the feet after they've been soaked, like, you know, if you get out of the shower or the tub. So I put this on. It's very lightweight in consistency. So what I do is I put it on all over my feet, in between my toes, and then, ladies and gentlemen, I cover it with good old plain petroleum jelly. And it has been, this has been like perfect pairing. This is great like by itself. It really does improve like soften dry skin on the feet and makes them look better. It's not super intense though for like a lot of cows build up, but that coupled with this, this really reduces transepidermal water loss and it also add lubrication to the skin so again coming back to me and my little funny twist thing that i think i'm doing um with my heels um that gives a little bit of lubrication and glide to reduce uh the frictional shearing that leads to blisters you see like i said the stratum corneum on the bottoms of your feet and uh, on your feet is is very thick so what happens is if you get shearing um you get separation um, of the, the, you know, some of that stratum corneum from under an underlying epidermis and it creates a, a separation and that ends up filling with fluid. You also can get, um, this is common in runners, I get this from time to time, it's called talon noir. Basically blood gets into the skin um, as a result of repetitive trauma 
it can fool you into thinking you have, you know, God forbid, a melanoma on the bottom of your feet, but it's actually like a blood blister, more or less. Um, and then the lubrication on top, I'm telling you, what can petroleum jelly not offer? I mean, it's like you can't go wrong. Lips, eyelids, neck, try it on your neck, works great. Hands, fingernails, it's really great because what it does is it helps with the cuticle is like a little seal that protects the matrix. And when that gets disrupted, either because you've been pushing your cuticles back or if you have hand eczema, it can get inflamed, you know, the inflammation from the hand eczema can cause that to separate a bit. And what happens is water, debris, microbes can get to the nail matrix. That's what leads to ridging a lot of the times. Not the only cause of ridging, but that's one cause of nail ridging as well as misshapen nails. So the petroleum jelly really helps to smooth that down. And a lot of people are like, well, I have really dry, rough, thick, overgrown cuticles. Try doing petroleum jelly, or if you have really thick, kind of overgrown, dry cuticles, try doing a urea hand cream, like a urea um, lotion cream. Uh, on your hands like the um, Eucerin advanced repair is a great option. This is the one with sunscreen the lotion, but um, they have a uh, One without sunscreen. I mean you could do the sunscreen one of course because you want to be protecting your skin from the sun But like I'm talking about at night. It can really help quite a bit um, I just finished a load of laundry. I need to put in the dryer there. It just turned off. That's what that noise was in the background. I mentioned in a vlog recently how on the weekends I like to watch a movie and I just watched um, Dr. Strangelove. Oh my gosh, I really enjoyed that because first of all, Peter Sellers, what a legend. What a legend. And I didn't realize this. I was, you know, the internet is a blessing and a curse because you can't just watch a movie without being inspired to go look some random thing up on the internet. So I went, you know, Googling Peter Sellers because uh, I really like him. And I came upon his Wikipedia page, which obviously is not like the most accurate, reliable source of information, but whatever. I figured, you know, I'll give it a look. And apparently, Eddie Murphy, who I also love, uh, was like a huge fan of Peter Sellers and like, you know, took a lot of inspiration for him and creating, you know, a lot of his comedy skits and characters and, and the like. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, but yeah, he did a really good job. Anyway, the movie, uh, it's, it's entertaining. The dialogue is very funny. It's very witty. <laughs> like, um, it's, it's just a type of humor that I happen to enjoy. But I will say you might find it a little slow moving. Um, so it's not like, I, I think it might not be for everyone, but if you like that type of humor, I think you'll enjoy it. I mean, Stanley Kubrick, the man is intense from what I, I have understood over the years and you know enjoying his movies. Um, but I've come to learn that like, apparently, um, he was really abusive to Shelley Duvall in The Shining. Yeah, I've heard that he was like super abusive to her in particular in The Shining. Like something about, like, I don't know, something about making her get into care. It sounds messed up. So I don't, you know, that's disturbing. Shelley Duvall lives, I want to say she lives in Houston. I know she lives in Texas. She may live out like in West Texas somewhere, but I know she lives in Texas. She's from Texas. Um, yeah, all that to say, like, I really enjoyed that movie and Peter Sellers killed it. So definitely check that out. Um, anyway, y'all, I'm gonna wrap this vlog up here. Thank you so much for coming along. I hope you enjoyed it and that you're having a fantastic weekend. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.